Hi, and welcome to Digital Tech Reviews and Tips, guys. My name is Gabe, and today, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the Ulanzi F38 carbon fiber video tripod. Wow, that's a mouthful, but I think I got it all in there. It is called a video tripod because it has a fluid head, so it hopefully will be better for video. As you can see right now, I'm using my 70 to 200 millimeter lens, so it's pretty impressive that it can hold that up while it's also being light and fairly portable, but is it worth the money? You know, tripods range from $150 to $900. This falls somewhere in that range. Will it do the job you need? That's why you're watching this video, hopefully. Check down below for links for anything I mentioned, but otherwise, let's just get right to it. All right. Okay, now I think I got my camera set up in like a not too precarious position that I can actually film myself and show you the tripod here. Boom, the Ulanzi F38. I hope I'm saying their name right. It's kind of a weird name, but yeah, that's the tripod right there. It's a carbon fiber tripod, uses your traditional rounded leg design, unlike the peak design tripod and all the copycats that it falls after. Um, but even so, even though this is like a traditional tripod design, it's still able to go fairly small like I can almost get my hands completely around it there like easily with two hands uh, so it very easily like tucks onto the side of a backpack goes in a duffel bag you know you name it you can fit this tripod there uh, it is a little longer than other tripods in the similar like class and weight range but that's mainly because you got the ball head on here so if you take that off and just have like a you know traditional like regular tripod head yeah, this is gonna be about the same length, um, but the narrowness and lightness is definitely ahead of other tripods that I've seen for sure. Um, talking about the legs, even though they're you know super lightweight, they're rated to up to 22 pounds. Uh, they use this unlocking, like twist to unlock design that I found, you know, doesn't leave me you know fearful that my camera is going to go flying to the ground but sometimes it's a little hard you know you got to be figuring out okay which one okay they're all unlocked okay good and then you know do that but that kind of comes in the territory of having the twist to unlock design uh, with a tripod versus the ratchet lock or you know like snap lock design so i personally am a fan of the twist to unlock but some people aren't if you aren't go look somewhere else um, however even though these legs hold 22 pounds don't just go chucking a heavy camera on the top because the ball head actually is only rated to 6.6 .6 pounds. So yeah, maybe that FX6 with the 400 millimeter lens isn't gonna work, but for most stuff um, that a video creator is gonna put on, like a full frame camera with a, even like I said, a 70 to 200 millimeter lens easily, one to 400 probably would be fine. Put a video mic on the top and stuff and it should still be able to hold that. So pretty much for all my needs, this has been good enough. Uh, able to hold enough weight. However, just do be careful because this isn't a counterweight uh, video tripod head that if you, you know have it unlocked, whoom, it will fly right forward with no problem smashing your lens. So just be careful. Um, but otherwise I have found that this, you know, the tripod head is fairly smooth. Uh, maybe, you know, not as smooth as some other more professional ones that have the counterweight in there and stuff like that, or have some robotic assist. Uh, but, you know, with a little practice and maybe using a rubber band or just like a light touch, you can get some smooth shots. The really cool feature I do like about this tripod head is, however, this ball joint here. So you just like unscrew that and you can actually level the tripod off using this little bubble level right there. I, hopefully it will focus on that. Um, yeah, I think you can see that. But yeah, so you just unscrew that, can level it off really easily and lock it off. And then, you know, once you have that, that your pan and tilt are gonna be perfectly up and down and left and right. So that's a really cool feature um, that even some more expensive and bigger tripods uh, for video won't necessarily have. Now, the other two things that, you know, Ulanzi likes to like say are really cool, um, really like cutting edge features. Boom, look at that little wrench. Where'd that come from? Whoa, hold on, where was that? Oh yeah, it's right up here in the tripod head. You know, pokes right in, holds in magnetically up there. Um, so you always have it with you wherever you're going and you can tighten down the tripod plate uh, to your camera. I would say, why don't they just little, you know, put a little thing that flips out underneath on the screw so you can tighten it down, but at least they're thinking of you and, you know, not leaving you out to dry with nothing. Um, the other cool thing that this does that was, let's just say, inspired for legal reasons um, by the Peak Design Travel Tripod is under here in the bottom, you have a smartphone mount, you know, you know what a smartphone mount is, boom, put your smartphone in there. I've found it that it holds everything up to like iPhone 14 Pro Max, so pretty much everything. It won't hold an iPad because like a tablet isn't a phone, that makes sense, but yeah, any smartphone you have, this will hold it, and it, you know, otherwise this is empty space here, it utilizes it, you always have it with you, 
Uh, my one complaint again is like, Ulan Z, come on, make it so it can hold a smartphone vertically because everyone is filming with their smartphones, but it's vertically. So having to carry around like an L mount adapter or something like that so you can mount your smartphone vertically kind of defeats the point of having this smartphone mount right here uh, and having a travel tripod that's light. So maybe that's going to be a V2 or creator's edition that we can have that in. But, you know, that's just one thing to consider if you were getting this strictly for filming with your smartphone vertically. Otherwise, yeah, this is a very nice, well-designed tripod um and it's definitely very portable so uh, that's the features that's the specs of this tripod now let's get on to talking about the three things you need to decide when you're buying a tripod number one durability how strong this tripod is you know how well it's going to hold up to abuse being chucked around and how well it can hold the camera you're putting on top number two and i'm not trying to flip you off there we're going to be talking about uh, how portable this tripod is because with a travel tripod that is very important that's usually you know the difference between can I bring this tripod with me and can I not is will it fit in the backpack, will it fit in the suitcase, will it fit in my carry-on on the plane. And finally, the last thing, of course, is is it worth it? Is it worth the price? Um, and is it the right tripod for you, you know, comparing it to other tripods in its class? So, yeah, that's it for features. Let's move on to those three things and figuring out is this tripod right for you? I'm here. What was your name again? Hi, I'm Shaggy from Sh Singapore. Shaggy in Singapore. And he's a videographer here. Yeah, I'm yeah. a filmmaker in Singapore. Filmmaker. And I decided that I was going to just give him a hands-on uh, with this tripod here. Here we go. It's the Ulanzi F38 video tripod there. Carbon fiber. Yeah, I just noticed that it's carbon fiber. What do you think, like weight-wise? Uh, you know what? I was really surprised by the weight. Seem seems lighter. Yeah, it seems lighter than what I'm used to. Anyway, if you if you guys need any reference, I'm using one of those. Yeah, look, he's got a. I mean, it's carbon fiber too. <laughs> but it's nowhere as light as this. Is this the longest it can go? No, no keep turning it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Boom. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is my first look. He has not rehearsed. Yeah, this is anything with me. Just giving it to him. Yeah. There you go. Oh. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. See, this still is learning. This is the struggle that I've been having a little bit sometimes with this tripod. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Still learning. The fluid head is very tiny. Is it? It's the smallest fluid head I've seen. Yeah. Okay, this is for leveling. And this is for panning. This is for tilting. And this is your plate. Your plate yeah. Oh, and they have a tool inside. So if you need to change anything. Is this a tool? Yeah, this is yeah, good. There we go, right? Yeah, nice and holds in well. What do you have for a travel tripod? I have a B3, Manfrotto B3. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I can go, I can go flat. Yeah, yeah. I think, or... I can go like low. Yeah. And do this. Oh, yeah. I actually didn't, I didn't realize this feature actually until right now. <laughs> yeah, that's a big, that's a big problem actually with tripods because a lot of tripods, you have like the extension and everything then it's very difficult for you to get really low shots like if you're doing architecture yeah. yeah because it's center column you're doing architecture or you're doing like a landscape right wait now now i need to know like the important question yeah how much is this how much how much would you pay for that 150 us 150 okay well you're not buying this then <laughs> <How much laughs> it's it's uh 260 us i mean rightly so because of the carbon fiber lah it's it's kind of tough though because I feel like when you pay for something like you expect it to feel like premium and and but you're really paying for the lightweight kind of right. You're paying for the weight, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a dissonant feeling because you're expecting something expensive to have a certain weight to it, but the the purpose of this is to be light. Yeah. So you, yeah, I just realized we're absolutely in the darkest part here. Yeah. <laughs> so overall, what would you rate it out of? Uh, I don't know. If we have three tripod legs, how many legs you give this one? making up a new rating scale on the spot uh i don't know because i i wouldn't use this i'm not really a travel filmmaker okay. but but in terms of quality i think the quality is there okay. but i really like the head yeah the head is very assuring i don't feel like i feel like i can get very precise pans and tilts with this which and is the rare for something that small yeah. yeah and at this price point the resistance is really good also yeah okay yeah. 
that's the premium part the hit what was your name and like shout out your socials oh my name is shaggy um on instagram at shaggy shag i'm a filmmaker from singapore yeah. cool thank you for your opinion on this uh tripod thanks um, for having me man yeah i wish i had a more professional filming setup no worries <laughs> yeah <laughs> There's two things I would go for right about now. Number one is definitely some air conditioning because, oh my gosh, it is so hot and humid here in Singapore right now. And number two would be another one of these tripods or just any tripod that I could put my camera on because right now I'm just having to set it on the ground. But put that all aside right now because right now we're talking about durability, portability, and affordability. The three big things when it comes to a travel tripod. So right off the bat, durability. Uh, I have a friend named Rachel who's a landscape photographer. She absolutely abuses her tripods constantly, goes through them like, I don't know, like candy, you know, it's six months at maximum. And putting this up to her standards, I don't think this tripod would survive. I mean, it's very durable. The carbon fiber is very strong. You know, it's aluminum up here, um, but you know, putting it to the elements, especially sand, I find that these locking legs are definitely gonna get something in them. And it just worries me that it's all like an internal mechanism and there's really no way to like take it apart, it seems, and repair it. Ulanzi, let me know if I'm wrong, leave a comment down below. But it seems like, yeah, you get some sand in there, get some seawater in there if you're shooting in the water or something like that, and you could be in for some trouble. The other thing I have noticed, just from a you know aesthetics point of view, when you're looking at this tripod, is that the black paint seems to chip off pretty easily. I've only had it for like maybe a week, and already on some of the knobs, it's starting to get like that worn look where the paint is chipped off and starting to turn silver. It's a very minor thing, but it kind of seems to indicate to me that like quality-wise, maybe not the best for durability. If you're really putting it through the paces, this tripod might not hold up too well. So maybe on a durability, we're gonna give it like, let's say a 6.5 or seven. Now portability though, that's a very different thing. I have a friend named Harrison, okay? He's a wedding videographer and he packs very light. We're talking about like maybe, you know, one bag for like a week long trip. And this I think would pass his test because you can easily throw this into a duffel bag, backpack, small suitcase, and not have to worry about it like dominating the space and you know being like okay well now i have to have one pair of underwear because i wanted to bring a tripod so portability wise i really like this tripod it's only slightly bigger honestly than the joby gorilla pod i wasn't able to get a you know side by side shot of those two but like as you can see you know only slightly bigger than the peak design one a lot smaller than my previous tripod that i had which was by three-legged things so yeah I really think that this is a very portable tripod. Uh, gonna give it like, let's say a 9.5 actually on portability because other than making it shorter, um, which really is just the fault of the ball head here, uh, the video tripod head that made it a little taller, this tripod is really good. So now we're getting to the part of the video where we're talking about, is it worth it? Well, I talked to my friend out on the street there who is from Singapore. He thought this was a you know little expensive for a travel tripod, but you're definitely getting a light tripod so is it worth the 260 dollars 270 dollars that it costs i'm gonna say for the price yes actually especially if you're comparing it to ones like peak design and, and three-legged thing or ben row like those are like three four hundred dollar tripods the question though is is this as durable as that obviously it got a little lower rating so you know is it worth it to buy one of those brands versus ulan z I personally have found Ulanzi does make really good products, so I was excited uh, when they released this tripod because it maybe is a good match on affordability and also like features and performance wise. We'll have to see long run. Again, I've only had it for a week. It's at least it hasn't broken in a week, so I guess that's one good thing, but really you wanna see like a year in, is this thing still in working shape or is it like, oh yeah, I can't go above three columns because it doesn't lock on the lower ones, you know? That's the sort of things that you have to look into when you're buying a tripod. So overall though, I really do like this tripod. I think that there is some improvements to be made, but yeah, if you're looking for a nice light travel tripod that does check the box of having a video tripod head, there's not many in the space right now, so, Oh, my camera's overheated. So 
I need to film a little more for my YouTube video. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry about the bubble. <laughs> oh no, it's okay. Now it's just the embarrassing part where you get to see the behind the scenes of me trying to say the uh, say the right stuff over and over. <laughs> Um, all right, so that brings me to the end of today's video, guys. I hope you found it helpful uh, and somewhat entertaining. Uh, one thing I did actually want to add I didn't mention because it's not really an important thing, but if you're buying a tripod just for the carrying case, this is not the tripod for you. Uh, the Ulanzi tripod includes this like kind of felt, I don't even, yeah, it's like a gem pouch almost type of case. Uh, it's hard to even call it a case. I really would have liked to see something like kind of a synthetic canvas or I don't know, something that could hold up to a little more abuse. But really, the number of times that I actually use a tripod's carrying case is pretty slim. Usually I just chuck it in my backpack as is or like in a suitcase. So yeah, not a really big deal, but just wanted to mention in the end there. Um, but that is it for today's video, guys. So thank you very much for watching. Click like, subscribe, leave your questions down below and peace out. Have a nice day. Bye. All right, cool. Don't, don't call my phone.